Visionaries, what is going on? It's your boy, Jason Osborne, back again. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking about Lightroom, more specifically this beautiful tool right here, the mask tool. Uh, Lightroom has made some incredible updates and uh, I'm in love with them, making this program more powerful by each update. And if you don't know how to use the mask feature, the updated mask feature for Lightroom, well, this is the video for you. We're gonna cover this right now. I have a completely raw photo here. Good friend of mine, Tiana, what up T? I'm gonna edit this with the mask tool to show you the functions. This isn't gonna be a complete edit from start to finish. I'm not gonna do all that. This is specifically just to show off these new functions of the mask tool that Lightroom has put in. One thing I will do is just make some quick general adjustments to this photo. Now what this used to be, and what it might still be for your Lightroom, is a little adjustment brush. There used to be a little brush right here, you would click the brush, uh, it would have all different effects that you could use that brush for. Um, and now when you click the circle, it has mask, it has all these things. So if you look right here, the brush is still here. The brush is what you're used to seeing. With that brush, you can apply your effect on all these different settings here. Okay, so here's the mask, okay? Now, basically, a mask is just a new layer on top of the photo. Now, the most powerful thing that they added with this update, in my opinion, is the select subject subject. I mean, select subject option. Before, when you want to make adjustments, you always had to use the brush. But now, with, I wanna delete the photo. Now, with uh, this new mask feature, select subject, it automatically does it for you. Lightroom has an AI now, and it automatically will select all your human subjects in the photo. And I'm usually skeptical of these kind of things because it's like, how accurate is it gonna be? Um, is it gonna be to a point where I always have to make constant adjustments to it? I don't know. But this thing is amazing and it's accurate and it's very, very true to the line and the edges with no spillover. I'm gonna click select subject, to detect the subject right here little spin wheel going, boom, boom, boom. And now I can click show overlay, look at that. Look at that. It perfectly selects the subject in the photo. Excellent. So now I can go ahead and do the same thing. If I wanna raise the shadows on her, boom, raise the shadows up. If I want to um, also go to exposure and raise the exposure up on the same mask instead of creating a new one, have shadows and exposure raised, I can do that. You know, you only can use one effect per mask. So if you want this to be, if I wanted this to be my softened skin mask, cool. Create a new one, go back to select subject. Let it read the subject again. Next up they added was select sky. So in Photoshop, you can actually replace the sky. Lightroom's not there quite yet, but in the past, when I wanted to, once again, make adjustments to the sky, I would have to either use the brush and paint in, you know, some highlight removal. So I'd go down with the highlights and I'd go up to the sky, bring some of those clouds back. I would lower the highlights a little bit. I used to have to do all that with the brush, you know what I'm saying? Literally, you just paint the sky with the brush and then make your adjustments like that. Or what you could do is you could use a, uh, gradient filter or the linear gradient, bring it down like that and have the same kind of effect because basically that's what it looks like. But now they have a select the sky option. And basically that gives it, you the ability to target the sky specifically while having using a brush or having to use a linear gradient. You can literally just go select sky, gonna detect the sky in the photo, select it. And as you can see, once again, Edges, perfect. It looks like it's fringing, but really it's not when you take the overlay, the mask off. The other tools that they have here, the linear gradient, exactly what I just said before, basically allows you to get a horizontal effect that fades as it gets closer. Control how much it fades by, you know, grabbing this bottom layer here, 
moving it completely with the middle. This is good for skies. This is good for having light come in. So we see the sun is over here. So what we could do is we could bring it over here this way. Have it kind of like look like a, a sun ray that's hitting her hair right here on the side. Increase the exposure a little bit on that side. Take rid of the dehaze a little bit. Do a little bit more of a, a and then warm it up. That's how you could use a linear. And then for the radial, it's almost the same thing except for it's an oval. So I put this around here and basically how this works is everything that this covers where it's affected or you can invert it and everything inside the circle stays the same and everything else outside the circle is affected. I like to use this inverted a lot because basically it'll allow you to um, do like, you know, basic effects to your subject or the background of your subject without necessarily affecting your subject and you can do cool vignettes and things like that. So I'll have this like right here, as you see in the middle, she won't be affected. And then you can increase the feather, which basically is like how far it's going to spread and be soft around the edges. So you can get like no feather and it's like super sharp, super apparent, or you add a nice soft feather. So it kind of blends in looks more natural so you do this and then I, you know what I like to do is go to exposure and I like to lower it so it's just like on her give it that like real like dramatic feel she kind of pops it draws your eye instantly to her and make it a little bit bigger now when you get to your menu it shows you all the masks that I've created so this is mask one and you can uh, actually, I believe you can rename it. So you can go from mask one. This one was exposure. This one co uh, control the exposure. Mask two, which was also on her body. This was the bot. This was the skin softening. Right here, skin softening. Mask three was the little sun flare in the corner. So we do sun flare. And then mask four, this was the vignette around her. So we can name this vignette. Vin. <laughs> so now when you click show overlay or hit the O button on your keyboard, it'll automatically show you where these masks are being applied. Okay, you can actually just hover over it and it'll show you. So this is the vin and then Right here is the sun flare, and then here's the softened skin, and here's the exposure. Once you're done with your mask, you click the mask button, it goes away, and it becomes a effect on your photo until you decide if you want to take it off, and it opens it up back to the regular menu. And then say I can zoom in on the face, I can create a new mask, use a brush this time actually, whiten the eyes up just a little bit. So we go here from softened skin to teeth whitening because that's what I use to whiten the eyes. And I'm just going to draw that in for the teeth whitening. Whiten those eyes up a little bit. Come out, make sure it looks natural. Day for color range, all right? Um, look, a color on her photo, on the photo. Click this red right here. Basically, it's just going to select any red in the photo and then you can control that so that's what the color range does it just allows you to select the full the color the specific color and then you can change that specific color luminescence range it works the same exact way but instead of with color it works with light so if you want to select all the very bright photo parts of the photo so like say your shirt is white right here it'll do that and it'll select all areas of the photo that match that same kind of exposure or whiteness all right, same thing if you want to go with the darks and the shadows, click the shadows and it'll pretty much select all the areas that have this tone or shadow or uh, amount of light in it. And this is also good for color grading or specific types of editing when you want to get super detailed and raise just the shadows or lower just the exposure or the highlights. Uh, this can be helpful. That is really all there is to it, you know? Um, 
it's very simple i love the new advancements that they are making with lightroom you know another update they did was adding these color wheels but i'll do another video on that but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below thank you for watching once again and uh yeah the masking tool very powerful love it and uh it's really keeping lightroom up to date with what's going on i'll talk to you later this is jason osborne till the next one peace <music>